Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board of Awesome. We have two agenda items tonight. The first is an appointment, uh, and then we're going to have hazardous mitigation, a workshop review uh, with our fine folks from uh, Franklin Regional Council of Governments. Before we start with that, I'm going to have an appointment uh, for part-time seasonal highway help as requested by the highway superintendent for, uh, looks like Matthew Hildreth. Yep. yep. He's been through the ringer with the highway department <laughs> and has prior experience and motion. is a recommendation. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero. Okay. Here we go. We got... Alyssa Rose and Xander, which is the second coolest name, because we got A to Z tonight from the COG, right? That's true. Yeah. All right. That's true, except we're both A's. We're, we're both A's. Wait a minute. Right. <laughs> there you have it. Um, to talk about a hazardous mitigation workshop review, and this is another step in that, that long uh, planned update of our hazard mitigation plan. So at this point, We'll hold off on updates until later. We get the appointment out of the way. George, go get them. And uh, Alyssa, let's have a conversation about tabletop exercises, not tabletop pies. Okay. That's different. <laughs> so see, you got a big thumbs up from the other chief. He's like, yeah, okay. I'll take tabletop. Pie? Yeah. Tabletop yeah. pumpkin, right? Um, <laughs> blueberry. Blueberry. Right. Yeah. Although squash is always Hubbard. Squ oh, Hubbard squash. That's true. That's, true. <laughs> That's what we. You're pretty punchy tonight. No, it's all right. We used to. We used to. You used to get all the pumpkins. They weren't really pumpkins. You're They're Hubbard squash. Hubbard squash, right? Hubbard squash. Right. <laughs> so, um, do you do that before you came to this meeting? Uh, no. See, <laughs> most of the pumpkin flavor. That's is why. Actually that's Hubbard. why Scott. That's why Scott says that we're the board of Boston. Right. That's because okay. I mean, that awesomely amazing beautiful data. Just awesome. <laughs> we get volumes of it. Volume. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I wanted to do two things. Um, one was to just. Um, talk a little bit about the, the MVP workshop that was held um, last Saturday. And so I know some of you were there, which mm -hmm. was great. It was a good turnout. Um, I think it went really well. Um, and um, so that, if you remember, is, is a separate but very related process to the hazard mitigation plan update. And the workshop will actually serve as one of the um, kind of public meetings that's required for the hazard mitigation plan oh, okay. um, in terms of gathering input. Um, and so um, the, MV for the MVP process, we still have a lot of work to do, um, um, but I wanted to just review kind of the, the top things that came out of the workshop and then talk about the next steps for that and then move on to the hazard mitigation part. So at the workshop, um, the top hazards that were identified that affect the town or impact the town um, fell into kind of four broad categories of wind, precipitation, extreme temperatures, and human-made hazards. Um, and you can see on the um, list that there's a lot of different things that can fall under um, those different hazards that kind of came out in the discussions. Um, and this isn't completely exhaustive, but I just tried to note the major things that came out of the discussions. Um, and so that was the first part of the workshop was talking about, you know, what are the concerns to the town when it comes to different types of natural and man-made hazards. Um, and then the second part of the workshop was actually identifying um, strengths and vulnerabilities in the town and some action items to kind of both address the vulnerabilities and build on the strengths. Um, and then at the end of the workshop, we um, three different groups came up with different items. And at the end of the workshop, we listed all of the high priority action items that came out of those discussions and, um, and then kind of further prioritized those. Um, everything that um, was discussed at the workshop, even like the lower priority items, everything is going to get incorporated into a summary report um, that will be kind of the end product of the MVP process. But I just wanted to highlight kind of the top um, priority action items um, to think about in terms of the hazard mitigation plan, because we can incorporate a lot of this into the hazard mitigation plan as well. 
So um, I just listed them pretty much in order in terms of priority too, because they did, um, you know, you all use sticky dots um, to pick your top action items. That's right. And so this actually is kind of a prioritized list. Um, so emergency communications came up as a big um, topic and concern, um, as well as backup power for town buildings um, and upgrading uh, what, what you have. Um, Dredging the town park fire pond on Park Road um, was a top priority, and we've discussed that as part of this group. Um, uh, trying to figure out how to communicate better, especially with um, renters in town who may not be, who may be living here for a short period of time and then moving on at some point. Um, so specifically trying to figure out how to get them to sign up for Code Red. Um, there's other, a few other action items in here related to kind of communicating with um, kind of apartment dwellers. Um, also just continuing to track elderly and vulnerable populations in town. Um, the, there is a, a lot of talk about planning and, and running an exercise on what happens if the Route 116 bridge is closed or taken out from a hazard um, and trying to figure that out, um, especially with folks on the other side of the river. Um, <clears throat> there was discussion about battery backup at the elementary school and just trying to explore if that would be possible given that there's the solar array there, um, as well as having air conditioning at the school um, because it is a designated shelter and if it was to be used in the summertime, um, that would be needed. Um, again, improving communications with renters. Um, the whole ditch system discussion came up, oh, yeah. um, <laughs> and that was a big topic as well. And basically, trying to move forward with um, continuing to study how it works as a system and figuring out what needs to be done for maintenance, and with the understanding that um, it's mostly privately owned. Um, updating the MOU with PVTA for evacuation assistance and also looking at other transportation options for evacuation, especially if it's a big regional event where PVTA may be um, going to other communities. Um, increasing energy resilience for critical facilities, um, kind of a more broader um, action item. Um, and then talking with either UMass, Amherst, Maple Ridge Church, um, basically trying to figure out an alternative shelter in the event that you can't use the school. Um, and there were certain hazards where that could be possible. Um, and then mapping culverts in town, which we've talked about as part of hazard mitigation. Um, and I think I brought some, I meant to bring a printout of an email about how you could go about um, uh, uh, getting some funding to do that. Yeah, okay. Um, so, and I didn't bring it with me. <laughs> but basically, there's two sources. You could, um, when the FERCOG sends out the GLTA request form yeah. in yeah. December, which is coming up not too long, um, there'll be an item on there about mapping culverts. And so uh, you can identify so we'll that pick as that a priority. Out. Yep, we'll do that. However, because it's very time intensive, work and it's in high demand, it's not guaranteed that you'll get that as a DLTA project. So the other potential option is um, through the community compact. Mm -hmm. okay. um, they have um, provided grants to towns for doing culvert mapping um, that a couple of our towns, I think Irving and maybe Wendell might be the other one, but there's two towns in our region that got community compact mm -hmm. grants to do, okay. to well, do that work. And, but I believe they contracted with FERCOG staff to, to actually do the mapping. But those are two options. And I can send you that information. Yeah, that'd be um, good. I'm sorry, I meant to bring a printout, but I don't have it. Um, and then the last thing was um, from the MVP workshop, kind of the last high priority action item was, again, to identify transient residents with special needs, um, and co uh, especially coordination with apartment managers who may know who might have special needs. Um, so, um, I just wanted to see if any of you who were at the workshop have any thoughts or comments.
comments about how it went or? I think it went good, yeah. yeah. Okay. A, everybody seemed to be pretty engaged and everything, and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it went pretty it was a good, a good process. <laughs> it did, actually. I'm surprised, right, because that was four fast hours. It was like poof. Yeah. You know, so. Um, and, and it, we did find out some other things, like about the, you know, the potential for drainage stuff and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and it was good to get some other people who aren't always necessarily together, together. So yeah, definitely some good good benefits out of it. So one of the next steps identified was to um, try to get input from um, farmers, agricultural yep. businesses in town. And so um, I, I'm planning on, I haven't yet, but I need to reach out to Laura Williams, mm -hmm. yep. right? Yep. Laura Williams, I know I have her email, um, to uh, see if she can um, reach out reach to out. them. We used to have an agricultural committee, but mm -hmm. that we haven't had that in a while. Now, have no, there's not a lot of action. Yeah, so there's, it was there kind is of, one person I know of that's still on it. Yeah, we could engage. Okay. So yeah, that's probably Laura is probably the best bet. <laughs> yeah, because my thought was I can, and we've reached for other towns that we're working on, especially with the hazard mitigation um, piece. We can send out like a little summary. Try to keep it brief. Um, not overwhelm them right. because the plan itself is so big yeah. um, and just try to have some targeted questions you know uh, I even did a flyer for Gill um, the town of Gill which just says okay these are the major impacts that we're seeing from climate change you know these are the, the hazards right. we're addressing in the plan how are you impacted how have you been yeah. impacted hmm. what are your major concerns yeah. basically and that input can get tied into both the MVP process as well as the hazard mitigation plan the other thing that we could do is have some um, just targeted communication um, conversations with some of the farmers in town so if there is someone that you think would be good to just reach out to in either I, I can have a phone call or meet with them I know that farmers are busy and it can be hard um, that's another thing that we can do is just like actually have like a 15 20 minute conversation mm -hmm. so during one of our prior meetings list there was discussion about storage and facility storage and facilities impacts from potential uh, weather related uh, events uh, what else would be reaching out to farmers for um for more one or two could watch this show at some point <laughs> right you are being taped and it is being broadcast and it will be rebroadcast. Yeah, so yeah. so what we're asking for is um, so so what both the hazard mitigation plan and the MVP process has kind of talked about are kind of the major uh, impacts from climate change are um, changes in precipitation patterns, both you know heavier precipitation, yep. but also kind of this Dryer. weird fluctuations and, and having drought, um, extreme temperatures, um, which is a general warming as well as um, again kind of crazy fluctuations in temperature, and then just stronger storms in general, which can be wind um, as well as the flooding and and ice and whatever it might be. So thinking of that. Um, and then we have this whole list of hazards that we're addressing, which includes the storms, um, flooding, um, extreme temperatures, invasive species. That's a mm -hmm. big one that we yeah. want to hear from oh, yeah. uh, farmers about. How are all of these things impacting your, your business? Um, and what are your greatest concerns? <coughs> so that's basically, I can get that information to Laura to send out to farmers, but if anyone's watching, um, we we just want to hear, you know, how how have you been impacted in recent years from you know extreme weather events or diff changes in temperature, um, invasive species, and what are your concerns for the future? Cool. Um, and then the idea is that, and if they have thoughts on what's needed, mm -hmm. you know, like what types of actions could the town be taking, or you know what you know, sources of funding are currently out there, you know, that maybe they just 
can't access or things like that. Like what what is needed, um, and then you can put that in as action items. Cool. Yep. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Um. So, uh, in addition to farmers, are there other um, other groups or or businesses or people in town that um, we should do some more targeted outreach to to get um, input? Um, I mean, we talked a lot about the apartment complexes. So, does it make sense to reach out to the managers, or and is that something I could work yeah. with you, Cindy, yeah. on? Mm -hmm. Okay. We can try that. Okay. See if we got any. There's response. not a lot of reciprocating back and forth there with them. So. Yeah. Okay. But they can. Start. We we've tried in the past to try to get them to hand out things to the <coughs> residents mm -hmm. as they come in. Yep. So how successful that's been, we don't know. Yeah. Okay. You just don't know. And you have some who stay a long time, and then some who come in and out. So okay. Are they doing it again? If somebody's been there short term, like less than a year, I don't know. So it could both be getting feedback from the managers themselves, but also asking them to maybe send something out to the residents. Plus, there's management that's changed with all of them. One in particular has changed hands. Okay. Actually, two have sold recently. Yeah. So we have new people. I just sort of like the meeting. A lot of people there hadn't participated in the stuff we did before. Okay. So we could certainly do that. Okay. Add something to them. Okay. That would be good. Okay. Sounds like a welcome to Sunderland flyer. Mm -hmm. Things to know, yeah, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. Hand out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, like, maybe when they sign their lease, oh, by the way, here's right. another right. little flyer. Here's emergency communications, here's et cetera. Yeah. Well, I think cool. you explain to the complexes why it's important. Because mm -hmm. we've had situations where they've had no water. Sure. Right. They know what to do. Right. Yeah, those are important in a mm -hmm. facility like that. So I think if you can explain that part of them, okay. part of it to them so they understand the impacts. Okay. All right, so we can we can work on that as well. Um, yeah, so the next step is to do this additional outreach um, and, and then start working on kind of pulling everything into this summary report um, that would then get reviewed by the, t the team. Yep. Um, and then once, after it's been reviewed, um, it would be presented at uh, a public meeting, you know, it could be part of a select board meeting or mm -hmm. its own separate meeting, um, however you want to do that. Um, so that process will move fairly quickly. It's pretty streamlined, but probably over the course of the next few months working on that. Good. So, sound good? Sounds very good. <laughs> okay. We're pumped. <laughs> So on to hazard mitigation, which is not quite as streamlined a process, but um, doing both of these at the same time is actually really helpful. Um, so tonight I wanted to go over um, table 4.1 in the plan, which is actually a combination of a, a bunch of tables in the last plan um, Chief. that we've just kind of pulled into one table for this planning process okay. um, to make it a little easier. Extra chair up here if you want. Um. <laughs> Nobody wants to sit up there. You guys can already on that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you need that. Yeah, we have more. Um, so um, in the past meetings, we've gone through the different hazards um, and talked about um, kind of what the key concerns are and problem statements. And we will get back to that to just um, look at the revised. Um, version of it. I just didn't have a chance to incorporate all the revisions yet since the last time in the in the workshop. But um, the next part of the plan is to review existing mitigation capabilities, uh, which is what this table is. And then after this table is the actual action table. So it's a very like kind of drawn out process and I know there's a lot of repetition but this is kind of how we have to do it. Um, so the existing mitigation capabilities um, talks about things in town like your uh, regulations, like land use regulations, so mm -hmm. there's zoning and subdivision um, language in here, which I did my best to kind of review your regulations to see what's changed, um, but it probably makes sense to also maybe send this to the planning board um, and have them review it as sense. well. Yeah. 
Um, and then there's also things like programs and practices um, that the town has in place to address a whole host of, of um, things as well as policies. So I thought we could just kind of go through it mm -hmm. and anything that you're not sure about, we can kind of skip and just note who needs to review it. And then other things you can let me know if, if anything's wrong or inaccurate or needs to be updated. Okay. Um, all right. So the first section talks a lot about zoning. So <laughs> I don't know how, how much you're all familiar with it, but um, so your flood, you, your floodplain bylaws, um, you actually don't have like an official floodplain overlay district in your zoning, but you do address development in the floodplain. Mm -hmm. So um, so the, the potential improvement in the past plan, it noted to basically adopt a floodplain overlay district. Um, in this plan, I'm saying to revisit, um, a, a consider adopting a floodplain overlay district and revisit the development controls once the new floodplain maps are available. Because you're in the process of um, having new floodplain maps developed by FEMA. Um, so it may make sense to just uh, revisit it at that time. Um, so this is both location, but also type of construction, site layout, fill, bringing in fill, not fill, those kinds of things. Yeah. So okay. um, typically how our towns regulate development in the floodplain is, um, so the way you do it is it basically anything, um, any new construction, um, um, new buildings or um, things like um, earth removal or anything causing that, that's not related to an existing mm -hmm. kind of building, that's not just expanding an existing building, requires a special permit. Um, and that's um, kind of how you regulate it. And then if it's in the, the 100 year floodplain, um, you have to have a certification from an engineer saying that you're not increasing the one hundred the flood levels. Makes sense. That's that's pretty similar to how most towns address it. They just address it in a slightly different they address it through like an an actual separate section in their bylaw. Okay. Yep. With an with a district that's associated with it. You just do it a little differently. It's still okay. basically the same thing. Um so, so that's you address it under environmental control, which mm -hmm. is the next one down. Right. So that addresses more than just the floodplain. Um, so that regulates um, site design and construction to avoid erosion, sedimentation, uncontrolled surface water runoff, um, and it also regulates anything with um, that's close to streams and riverfronts. Yeah, that's where our concom comes in. Yeah. Right. Kind of um, ties in with the wetlands bylaws as well. Again, kind yeah. of one-stop shop there. Yeah, and that's on here too. Yep. So then you have your special resource districts, which are the prime ag district, critical resource district, and watershed district. Mm -hmm. um, and so again, in these pretty big areas of town, you have additional um, review of projects to help mitigate any impacts on um, the environment, but it includes the um, uh, drainage, surface water, groundwater, um, soil erosion, etc., and then your wetlands bylaw, um, which is a local bylaw, um, also addresses um, removing uh, fill, dredging, altering anything within um, 100 feet of a water, area. yeah, resource yeah. area. So you have a lot of protections in place. Um, you do also have Board of Health regulations for the flood hazard area or the 100-year floodplain that um, deal with water supply and sanitary systems, um, which helps protect um, public health. Um, so these are all categorized as effective, meaning that they're in place, uh, they're in use, and mm -hmm. uh, they have an impact. Yeah, and there's no like major um, deficiencies. Yeah. So no area of focus. Right. Yeah. Um, but if you, if anyone, you know, if the CONCOM or the planning board or anyone feels like there could be improvements, that's yeah. where it would be good to get their okay. thoughts. Great. Um, it's just a basic review from our level mm -hmm. is saying, okay, you have these things in place, that's great, but there may be improvements that could be 
right. suggested. Makes so it's sense. not that. Um, um, and then on special on the next page, um, special permits. Um, for, so I, I noted how there's quite a bit that ends up going through special permit process because if it's in a critical resource district, etc., um, it will need a special permit. And so there is criteria. Um, and um, you did add, um, so in the last plan, it um, suggested adding drainage and stormwater as a criteria, um, and that was added in 2011. Mm -hmm. So you did that. Good. <laughs> um, so it's something that's looked at as part of special permit process. Um, under site plan review, which is another review process, sometimes in concert with special permit and sometimes just by itself. Um, uh, there's um, language to the effect that development has to minimize cut and fill, number of large trees removed, area of wetland vegetation displaced, increases of stormwater flow from the site, and soil erosion. So there's a lot addressing um, impacts there. Um, I added in that you have a flexible development bylaw that encourages um, new residential development to be clustered with some protected open space. Mm -hmm. um, which is good, and you also have incentives for greater open space beyond the 40% that's required. Um, your wireless communications facilities bylaw um, regulates location and construction of telecommunications towers, and you have uh, fall zone regulations to help so that if there was wind damage or if it, the structure were to fall. Um, so that's why hmm. that's kind of in there for wind related that makes sense. reasons. Um, a new one this time around is your large-scale ground-mounted solar electric installations. And I still need to follow up on, I know you had a question from a couple meetings ago about um, what happens if these are inundated with flood floodwaters. Right. And I need to still follow up on that. Um, but in terms of your regulations, um, you address large, anything over 1,000 square feet that's affecting more than 1,000 square feet of land. Um, has to uh, go through this more rigorous review, um, which addresses stormwater erosion, vegetation control, hazardous materials that might be stored on site, and removal of vegetation. Um, so it had, it. the only thing that I thought of, which I didn't actually put on here, and I don't, and maybe I, it could be a question for the planning board, is you don't cap the size of solar hmm. um, arrays in town. Um, some towns do um, limit the amount of acres you can clear for a solar array to um, as little as like five acres to some are more like 20 acres hmm. but um, I could put that as a consideration I, I guess I feel like Sunderland has a lot of protections in place but that's another thing to consider I don't know if you've been experiencing uh, a lot of pressure from large no, no. solar because the one by the school, we have a, like a power purchase agreement yep. with another provider. And then the other one that's in town is actually owned by um, Eversource. Yeah. And that's like maybe four acres or five acres. It's not that big. Yeah, around there. there. And it's their property, yeah. Yeah, it's not huge. Because, uh, yeah, sometimes have experience like really big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, like a, a solar farm, essentially. Yeah. Um, um, yep. So, uh, anyways. Um, it, it could be something, but otherwise, I think the the, the bylaw looked good, and you limit um, limit limit develop like you can't be on steep slopes and things. Right, like and that. there has to be right. certain like fencing and yeah coverage and everything. Um, uh, mobile homes and campers are allowed only as a temporary use. Um, and the, in the previous plan, it had the same language, which was adding requirements to ensure adequate. Support and anchoring systems are used for temporary mobile homes, so making sure they're tied down. That still wasn't, hadn't been added to the zoning. Um, par you participate in the National Flood Insurance Program. Um, as of 2018, there are 13 policies in effect. Um, so under this, we're just noting that it's partially effective. Floodplain maps are outdated. Conduct outreach to property owners once floodplain maps are updated. Um, hmm. When those get updated, are they just 
printing paper maps like they did the last time, or are they no, doing some electronic? No, they'll be digitized. Oh, thank goodness. Yes. <laughs> okay. You, Franklin County is the only county in Massachusetts that doesn't currently have digitized floodplain maps. Uh. And so, yeah. Mm, that's the way we like it. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way. If yeah, they're actually away. finally going to update them, yeah. they will be digitized. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Nothing wrong with paper backups, but, you know, we need, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so the, the thought there is that um, it'd be good to, to make sure property owners are aware that, um, so the way that the floodplain insurance works is if you don't, if you're not taking out a mortgage on a property or if you've owned it since forever, um, since before the program went into effect, you don't have to have flood insurance. But, um, so there may be property owners out there who may um, benefit from knowing that it, they can access the NFIP insurance, which is cheaper right. than like a private mm -hmm. insurance if mm. they want to have flood insurance. So there's that element of it. And then when the floodplain maps are um, updated, it's very possible that new properties uh, that's what I was gonna say, will right? be you, in the floodplain that weren't I mean, previously. Yep, right. And we probably and so should also do outreach, kind of to, outreach to those yep. properties to be like, okay, hmm. look. <laughs> By the way. Um, so, it's not required again unless they're going through a bank basically for like a refinance or a mortgage but it's it's a it could be a benefit you know that they can access this and that's the function yeah. just communicating to the public yep cool um so the floodway dishes that's what it was called in the last plan i don't again i don't yeah. know if you and want to change the name <laughs> because honestly most of the stuff was really now compromised like what we're thinking of it is really the perennial. Yeah. And I think there's one intermittent stream in that section. And anything that's a ditch mm -hmm. that's not one of those waterways is really on somebody else's private property and it's up to them to maintain it. Okay. In that sense. But um, because we're really trying to focus on like making sure the culverts are mapped mm -hmm. clean, you know, yeah. kept clean. And then for those, um, I can't think of the name of the the watershed area over here, but make, maybe looking at clearing out stuff that has grown in trees that have fallen into the perennial streams. Okay. And things, but. So should this? I mean, I I forget what we've. I should have looked back and saw what we called it earlier. Um, so this is specifically talking about. The, the kind of drainage system that is located mostly on private property. Um, you think that's too too broad of yeah. a, 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 okay. an ass let me let me rephrase. Let me rethink that. Do you think that that's a, a simple assertion that it's a drainage system? And in a because I had to hesitate to call it a system really at all. Was it, you know. Was it designed as a system in 200 right. years ago? Maybe, you know, no, mm -hmm. it wasn't, you know. So that said. Right, people just cleared their land and drained it. And right. That was it. Okay. And if there were any larger ones, you know, you've had farmland that maybe you had a large farm that had some uh, drainage ditch on it. Yeah. Then it gets, you know, right. peeled off in small acreages amounts. And then people put their houses in like, wow. Well, that's a perfect spot to dump my grass clippings sure. and my leaf stuff. Or they graded and got rid of it altogether. So, so it's from a purely uh, a personal perspective, I don't want the town assigned mm -hmm. with the notion that somehow there's a system that it's supposed to maintain. Right. Yeah. That, that's, I don't want anything that, personally speaking, I don't want anything that conveys that that's somehow a town responsibility. Okay. Yeah, because it's, I'm trying to think of how to word it, but that, yeah. <laughs> Um, Just because some people how. think it's some kind of town. Yeah. Well, but at one point the town did. They may have undertaken a project some at some yeah. point, but. They, and they did. And we also yeah. used to have horses and buggies. Understood. I, I, but, but I'm saying. Right, the town did, at one time did do stuff. And all sure. of that was prior to wetland regulations. Because mm -hmm. that was going about the late. I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to remember. Yeah. We, 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 I, I mean, in, in the, in our research, mm -hmm. we've, we've never, we've never been able to find in boards, boards before us 
have never been able to find any type of um, deed restrictions or any type of information. Yeah. Now, now I do know that the town at one point when I was younger and before mm -hmm. that, that the highway crew would out be out there mm -hmm. burning brush. Mm -hmm. And I and I remember the behind Strozik's house, the the um, excavators out mm -hmm. there digging digging the oh, like dredging and stuff and dredging right so i and i i remember and and oh. they they would go out and cut in cut and burn mm -hmm. now i mean i i you know is that adverse possession i don't i don't know mm -hmm. but no one's been no one's ever been no one's and and, and boards have tried mm -hmm. and groups have tried in town before to try but you know, we could have the greatest of intent, and we could get ninety-nine percent of the people to sign, but one person doesn't sign. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and then you know. all for naught is it all clogs up on one property or something like that? And, right. And that's one of the things we're talking about and acknowledging yeah. that. You know. So, so it, it's it, it's interesting. I, I, you know, I I would say, you know, is there anything ever anything written down that was our responsibility? I don't even find that in the minutes. Right. Yeah. I think it was something that just happened over time. So the reason yeah. for my comment is to have a report that begins assigning to the town, I right. want to avoid. Yep, that makes yeah. perfect sense. No, so I'm trying to get the language right because I mean, it was in the last plan and it has yeah. been talked about as, I mean, it's it, so this plan isn't necessarily just mm -hmm. talking about public properties or facilities. Um, it's the town in general. Mm -hmm. So making it clear that I mean, this, I tried to say located mostly on private property. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, so is it more that it's a, so instead of calling it a system. Yeah, it's definitely not a system. It's a series of perennial and intermittent streams. Is that better? That's mostly on private property. Boy, I don't know. Um, well, see, and, and, but, that, but that, you know, 75 years ago, perennial and intermittent streams. Well, that didn't exist. That That's definition right. really didn't was exist. didn't apply. Yeah. Right. So it's just like the stream's clogged. I'm gonna go and dredge it. That was pretty much the approach. Correct. Yeah. Or, or like the the stream. I guess we call it Mohawk Brook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really a stream, but it was really started as a. Did it start as a ditch? Right. Good question. Right? right. I don't know. In, in Dry Brook. I mean, it's called Dry Brook now, but did it start as a ditch or did it start... Right. Was it always a brook that was right. there? And right. I, I don't know. So I, I, I think your, your, if I could, I think your effectiveness and improvements <clears throat> captures the challenge mm -hmm. really well. That one's spot on. Okay. And, you know, the drainage system, uh, I struggle with that. The rest okay. of it, located on private property, originally created to drain the floodplain for agriculture. I don't, I, I can't, you know, I don't know about that. I don't know if that's real or not real. I mean, it probably was. I mean, they probably dug a bunch of ditches so they could get well, water the hell out because they could plant things. Well, the or, only thing. Or have cattle. The only, the only thing I've ever seen in our, in information in 1954 is about a ditch that was at the knee of the hill um, off from North Silver Lane, mm -hmm. and and but that kind of that kind of went by the wayside because when they put in button ball, they they went right through that. Yep. Oh. But that was the only only records I could ever find, Scott. Mm -hmm. Whatever so that means. About the, the great ditch, the one that runs down the center, and all the. Russell, side, Russell Street side and all that. I mean, they're, they're illustrated. We see them. You know what their history is? I don't know. Right, because there's no good documentation on the origins right. of them. So, and, it, um, and they used to call the swamp field. So. Right. right, yeah. I mean, so right now in the flooding section, because um, we did kind of talk about this, it's mm -hmm. called drainage ditches, yep. not floodway ditches. Yep. Um, and then we were going to add... Um, some language to say that it's not a municipal, to make it clear that it's not a municipal right. system. Um, but so, so should we use the same? Yeah, common, the same drainage? Com, com, common language yeah. across both spaces. 
Um, okay. Um, all right, so we'll try to revise that and make it really clear it's not a municipal system. Well, and one of the things that we're looking at doing is just like a, at first, like a public outreach campaign, essentially. Right. To, to let people know, you know, you might want to clear that out. Stop filling the ditches. Right. <laughs> Public outreach. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Is there a continued kind of study or need for a study on the the on the ditches? There was one on one ditch, uh, 2013, or yep. and, and it was by the Conservation Commission, and it was very thorough and quite quite good. But it was one ditch. Oh, okay. It okay. At the, well, I would think that was Mohawk it's the biggest Brook, one, right? Yeah. And Dry yeah. Brook yeah. and. There's one other one in that area, yeah. Okay. So it had elevations, it had, you know, fills, had the the base elevation of the original without it being filled in, and what flow rates could be, et cetera, et cetera. So okay. that exists. Okay. So, if, so would more studies like that be helpful? Yes. Plus public education? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... Could not hurt. Study plus public outreach. Okay. Um, all right. Moving on, state building code. Uh, basically, just saying it's effective for new mm -hmm. construction and significant rehab. The Im improvement, possible improvement, is to just to conduct outreach to homeowners about available housing rehabilitation resources um, to address kind of the older homes. Mm -hmm. And don't we do the stretch code? Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. We could so. add that in there. Stretch energy code. Um, uh, and then you have our open space and recreation plan. Um, it was updated in 2014, so since you were last working on your hazard mitigation plan, um, but it will be need needed to be updated again in 2020 to, co to um, continue to be um, uh, up to date. Never yeah, up to date. I think the it expires in 2020. Usually the CONCOM does that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that, that keeps you current for um, like the park grants and the land grants. Yeah. <clears throat> um, your subdivision rules and regulations um, uh, dictate street utility drainage design and construction for new subdivisions. You currently encourage um, low impact development stormwater features, which is great, um, which is where you're in, trying to infiltrate more of the water close to where it falls and yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. smaller scale um, systems. Um, you require an environmental analysis for developments of 10 or more lots, which is pretty thorough. Um, and you currently require utilities to be placed underground. Um, so they're in pretty good shape. Um, and you also, just as a side note, because this is something I always look at, is um, your your widths, your roadway widths and things, mm -hmm. um, some towns have pretty old subdivision regulations that require like 30 feet of pavement for a very small residential street. Sure, sure. You guys are not in, you're, you're very, like, have very kind of minimal paved widths. Oh, um, good. So it's not um, increasing the impervious surface That's and good. the yeah. everything. Um, in terms of underground utilities, um, so as noted, you require new subdivisions to place them underground, um, but all existing, that doesn't apply to existing lines. So in the old plan, uh, basically just carrying forward, encouraging utility companies to underground existing utility lines in locations where repetitive outages occur and for new A&R lots, um, which are going in on existing roadways. So that's carried forward. Um, curb cut regulations, this was in the last plan too, um, and I, I couldn't find anything, um, there's no... We have driveway permits. You do? Okay. And, and, and we've had them for a long time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's basically for a new, when a new driveway is they, being... They talk about, yeah. Okay. About adequate access and like now, now our building inspectors have always, they never got, they've, they've tried to make it, um, simple so it wouldn't become too technical yeah. because the more technical it gets the, the yeah. least understood it becomes right yes. good point so but yeah we do have driveway permits and i okay. i thought that the highway superintendent needs to sign off that, on them right. 
I believe it is correct. Okay. Yep. All right, I can update that then. Um, yeah, that's not something I'm super familiar with. Um, burn permits. Um, so residents need to obtain permits online or over the phone. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's kind of an ongoing wildfire organization. Uh, fire safety education and outreach. Um, so in the last plan, it notes that the fire department conducts fire safety education program at the elementary school, um, which I believe is continuing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, fire towers. Uh, there's a fire tower in Sunderland on Mount Toby. Um, and it's occupied. Hmm? And it's occupied. Not Is only. it occupied year-round or just seasonally? During, uh, during, during the, the uh, uh, threat season, yeah. yeah. Okay. And we can make note of that. Um, permits for dam construction are required, so any new dam being constructed. Um, dam inspections um, are based on DCR schedule of the hazard rating, the FERC high and significant hazard dams, which are upstream of Sunderland, are um, on are regulated by FERC. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so those are inspected, and this was carried over from the last plan that um, DCR needs more resources to enforce inspection schedules. But um, that's probably should just make that clear. It's not for the FERC related ones, um, not FERC. We only have one dam in town, right? Mm -hmm. Just we have that one dam in town. Falls it's Road, a private one, right? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, I was trying to remember because I don't think we sharp on the discussion yeah. on dam failure really had to do with the, the upstream dams, right? So. Like the bigger ones, yeah. Um, and so that's the next one is the high and significant hazard dam emergency action plans. So these are required for those dams. Um, and um, I just noted that Sunderland is responsible for notifying residents of a dam failure. Because this is starting to come up in a lot of towns. Um, right. hmm. uh, the emergency action plan has the kind of communication tree that will notify the um, emergency management director in the town. But then beyond that, it's up, that's up to the towns and the region to get the word out to residents. So that just ties right into the communication plan. Yeah. Yep. So, um, and we had talked about like stuff like that, you know. We've got it in the big binder. Yeah. Even like a siren or something, you know, a number of, should be a lot of different Dirigible. words. Dirigible. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yeah. I think we'll send the chief around <laughs> on his car with his megaphone and start yelling. Yep, and right, and that's one of the other things, right? Yeah. There's all the different ways that you got to let people know. Right. Chief, you really want a dirigible, though, don't you? Yeah, exactly. Right. A nice Goodyear blimp with a little the rolling sign on it. Give me an A, you mean? Oh, sure. <laughs> Shoot for the stars. That's all. There you go. Nice. It'd be great for traffic enforcement, yeah. you know. So you can see how, like, uh, this whole improvement section will lead into the actual action item so again it's all kind of leading to the action plan um which we'll talk about next time uh, evacuation plan so you do have evacuation routes identified um, and you have an mou with pvta for evacuation assistance which i added in mm -hmm. after the mvp yeah. process so the what what had been discussed was that that mou needs to be updated and alternative transportation resources identified and also kind of testing the evacuation plan seemed to be um, a need. Um, emergency communications, so you have code red, social media, town website, email lists, loudspeakers for emergency communications. FCAT, we have FCAT oh, also. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we should add that. Um, we have FCAT. FCAT. Frontier, Frontier Community Access. access. Yeah. TV. Um, so, um, and just noting, this is partially effective. Not all residents are signed up for Code Red. Renters are especially hard to reach. Mm -hmm. Encourage residents to sign up for Code Red when signing a rental lease. Work with translation. This I added in. Work with translation services to create emergency messages in multiple mm -hmm. languages. We also have roadside signboards. Okay. That, that, aren't, that aren't on here. 
Board. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, board. <laughs> it's still it's still one that's it's not listed. Yep. Right. That's true. And it's electronic. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's one of those ones. Yep. It's solar powered. Nice. And, and talk about you know reaching out to renters. If we have that good relationship with the larger uh, apartment buildings, that's great, but it's the individual yep. small yeah. businesses. Yeah, that's that the hard thing. Yeah. Which houses, we talked yep. about that day. Yeah, it's those individual renters we just don't know. Yep. Or like out-of-town landlords that's yeah. got maybe like a house or two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or a bunch. Mm -hmm. Yep, <laughs> or a bunch, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. a bunch of those. And you just can't communicate effectively with those. You know, when, when we did the uh, the 300th parade, we notified the apartment buildings managers, and then they were effectively able to then send it out to their renters. Okay. Yep. So that was easy. But the rest of them was basically walking door to door, knocking on right. doors, asking for files. So yeah. So we we we've, we've done that before yeah. also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did that too. Wait, in in back in the 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 storm of October mm -hmm. of. Seven eight years ago, we 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 did yeah we where the board of selectmen at the time at the time canceled Halloween which we didn't but yeah, that was awesome yeah, <laughs> yeah. there'll be no Christmas it, this year <laughs> but um in 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 fact in in fact um we did have a plan in place and we actually and and it actually doing the apartments was a lot easier because. There's a high concentration of people, yes. and it was very easy. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could just in Cliffside, you could just open up the door, and because you you access three different floors, and you could just say something in that hallway and and get three six apartments very quick. Yeah. So it's not it it's really not a disadvantage mm -hmm. um, to get messages in the apartments. Right. Um. Yeah, and it made me think too of, I mean, this can be thought, um, we can work this out more with maybe the action items, but um, for the individual kind of apartments here and there, um, they they are required to have um, an inspection, right? Every so many years. Um, if not if you're renting out your personal home. Yeah. Yeah, that's oh, a, right. well, yeah. like a single family home. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's more like a multi family. Yeah, it's important to bear in mind though. Yeah. The, 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 rental, the rental stock isn't just big brick buildings in Sunderland. There's a right. lot of two and four families. Well, that's There's what I'm a lot of to get at, you know, owner those, single family yeah, homes. Yeah, not, un, yeah. not um, sorry, rented single family homes as well. Right. Right, yeah, it wouldn't catch the single family right. homes. Right, absolutely. It's kind of a good um, point. Yeah, like students. Okay, well, yeah, definitely thinking about it. would be good to know if any of these complexes have any plans in place for their residents. Mm -hmm. Right, like their so own emergency them. plans. Yep. Right. right. What are their contingencies? Like for that one that lost in the water. Yeah, and if they do have them, it'd be nice to have them on file with, with right. you guys, you know, so you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that would be a, that can be a follow up question for the MVP process then. Um, to ask about that. So they may very well have plans in place. Mm -hmm. And some things are required to have in place by other entities. That's true. Right. So we learned that State from the water agencies. issue. Yeah. So, you know, but we don't know if they have plans in place for their residents. Okay. Or and communications. Need, or maybe they need assistance in planning something. Right. Right. Yeah, and it would be good to have it coordinated mm -hmm. so that you don't have four separate plans that aren't right. Yeah. Whole complex that has basement apartments. Okay. Sugarloaf's got right? Uh, yeah, so emergency communications is a big big topic, so we could probably get um, a number of action items there for that one. That's challenging. Even yeah. regular communication is a challenge. Right. Um, and then culvert assessment. Um, just noting that the town does not have a map of culverts. Does, does MEMA still do the hazard mitigation grants for culverts? Um, MEMA uses them. Hmm. Yeah, I think towns can use them. I know there's also some state funds for culverts. Um, there's a few different possible funding sources, I think. Um, uh, so this was just a requesting assistance from FERCOG to map and assess culverts. Um. When they map them, do they put them in a database too, or is it just like on a map? 
like um, a, you know, a GIS layer or something? Well, I know that they, they can create like an interactive map um, and they may, I believe they're using a form that, um, I forget the, the name of the organization, but there's a, a database that I believe they're using that format. So mm -hmm. okay. I can double check and see if it's getting entered into this mm. kind of bigger database or not. I'm not sure. I'm just thinking it'll be good for like the highway department to have access to it so that you can utilize that in your regular maintenance and cleaning schedules too. Oh, okay. And inspections. Uh, do we already pay money for our assessors GIS map? Or isn't there a way of putting in different tables for yeah. highway? Adding, yeah, well, that's all right. We adding adding a layer. layer. There's layers right. in place already and we're trying to add to those. Yeah. But there's five layers or so now. Right. Um, yeah, that's a good point because because um, I'd like to see that as a layer on there. Yeah, because we could create the GIS layer and then give it to whoever the doing assessors and assessors are supposed, supposed to be awesome. Yeah, yeah they, they're definitely It costs some money to do that, but not it's not terribly expensive. Right. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, tree maintenance, um, the highway department and electric company trim tree branches near overhead power lines. Um, Yep. The highway department head is also the tree warden, so. Okay. Um, it seemed like there haven't been major issues that that's ongoing. Not in a couple of, not in the last yeah. couple of years. It's ongoing. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a practice that goes around every year. Okay. Um, state forest fire roads maintenance. Um, this is actually one that was I brought in from another huh. town um, because that it came up that the um, roads aren't. Oh, when we were talking access. about over the weekend, yeah. Yeah. Tower Road. Yep. Um, access to the state forest as, as well as surrounding forest land um, is not great, um, and that the roads aren't. They're not like town roads. They're fire mm -hmm. or woods roads. Right. Yeah. Um, aren't maintained. Um, so just saying it, it needs to be implemented. So coordinating with DCR to ensure roads are maintained, improve. Um, and then I just noted that improved access to water supplies for firefighting is needed as well, um, which is the town. The specific action identified was the town. The dredging of the part, yeah, pond. The pond, yep. Um, as one potential way to increase access in that area. Um, which could be in the action plan. <coughs> um, so backup drinking water supply. So 93% of residents are served by a mm -hmm. public water supply. The Sunderland Water District wells have backup generators. So it's pretty effective for folks who are on public water supply. Um, backup power. So Sunderland's municipal buildings have backup power generators or are capable of using a portable generator. Mm -hmm. um, but just noting it's partially effective, the town is in need of new generators to replace aging ones and explore backup battery storage at the elementary school. <laughs> that seems to be the discussion at the- Here we need a new generator. Yeah. Well, we have one right now at the public safety complex. It's gonna tie those two together. It gets rid of the old one. Hmm. We have it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we talked we about that. It. We just have to tie it in. Um, and then warming and cooling centers. This is kind of a new one because we're talking about extreme temperatures. Um, so the Sunderland Elementary School is a designated warming center and the library is a designated cooling center. Um, and just noting partially effective upgrade backup power generators, install air conditioning at the elementary school and explore battery backup at the school so ex install uh, air conditioning at the elementary school is, is a very big broad statement that's very very expensive we don't okay. we don't shelter in classrooms you only yeah, shelter so. in the gymnasium right. so, just in the so gym. you may want to say you know practices for portable cooling or something Okay. Putting putting in a plan that you want to air condition the <laughs> elementary school the is like thing. no okay. <laughs> not gonna happen got it um, you can buy portable coolers, you can rent them. Pretty easy. Right, and then, because we, we had talked about isolating the joint, because yeah. that's really the... That's a shelter in place. Yep. 
Okay. This, this school is really clear about that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Um, I thought you were advocating for air conditioning and energy reduction. I'm and sure somebody would like that. Yeah. But. <laughs> Yes, everything. Everything. Um, we want it all. <laughs> um, so, sheltering plan. The Sunderland Elementary School is a designated shelter. However, the school is vulnerable to severe floods or dam failures. It is not equipped with air conditioning. We can, again, tweak that language. Mm -hmm. um, a regional sheltering plan has been completed. Shelter management teams need to be created and cost sharing agreements between towns established. Good point. Um, so it's partially effective. So again, air conditioning in the gym at the school, yep. exploring options for that, I guess, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Um, and then participating in the regional emergency planning committee's planning process to operationalize the regional shelter plan, which I believe for you guys would be Frontier yep. um, as the regional shelter. If we can get over there. Right. Well, that's right, because if you if, if dirigible, if there's a dam break, you. Yeah. Back, back to the dirigible, up, back to dirigible, if there's no bridge, airlift, airlift. Yeah, yeah. and so um, I guess we could add that in the because I know that that's the, an MVP <laughs> thing, so mm -hmm. um, explore. Well, we can still drive north, you know. That's true, and south. Yeah. And east. And east. Options. And you can and we go up to the next bridge in Montague. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's what you'd have to if do. If the general pierce doesn't fall down. It's only one lane right. right now, right where the big hole is. <laughs> I went over it on Saturday. It's kind of funny. They had to do that bit. They had to do that six foot by six foot square repair in the middle of it. So they've got the two lanes. Uh, they're block. They're blocking traffic toward the middle lane. You go right over this enormous patch. And I told my wife the story about that. She says, "Why are we on this bridge?" Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, it's a big topic with the Montague. Yeah, have yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> you get a bridge there every day, and then the the floor falls out of it. It's really, really bad. Yeah. Um, Sorry. No, that's okay. So yeah, we actually. Montague, we should... you have our support. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's regional. It's a yeah, regional. It's a issue. regional bridge. Um, so yeah. Why? Because you can't get in or out of Montague. <laughs> The way it's happened, I mean, although the, the one going to Gill is good. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's a good one. one good one. That's a good one. <laughs> yes, basically. You got, you got the South Worth Bridge. <laughs> yeah, anyway. So, um, yeah, so we should Absolutely. add in ex Absolutely. the yeah. kind of exploring alternative sheltering um, kind of east of the river mm -hmm. um, as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Onion skin paper. Um, yeah. So debris management. Um, so this one also is kind of a regional... Hmm. thing um, there's a plan it's it's in the process of being updated hmm. it's tricky um, towns may need to identify a site in their own town if so does any town have a site um, not that I know of hmm. so the idea with the regional plan was to actually identify sites uh, regional sites yeah. that obviously are in a town so so certain towns would have to agree to have a site hmm. designated in their town, and it just gets where they'd be taking in debris from other towns. And, and that's just, a, and that's a big one because I remember back when the big ice storm oh, hit up north, yep. yeah, and, and I just happened to be going to Plattsburgh doing a work and the job up in Plattsburgh during it, and Plattsburgh was a, the well northern or southernmost civilization, depending on which way we were going, mm -hmm. and they used the their skating rink up there a state state skating rink parking lot was a debris mm -hmm. yeah so everybody was bringing and they had chippers galore yeah. and just going for it yeah and during, but that wasn't an official site right. until the during disaster the, hit during the response to the tornado in springfield it was right on the it was right next to belize they had that cement parking yep. lot oh yeah yeah and yep. it was just just Full brush and trees and stuff for yeah. months and months and months but that's, you know, that, I'm sure it's not the kind of regional agreement we're talking about. I'm sure that was like, put it there. Well, right. right. So during an emergency <laughs> that's empty. is right. one thing. And then, so the idea of planning. Right, right. <laughs> so much to, better. So we right. know where to go. <laughs> is to know that. and to have it all established and the idea of having mm -hmm. equipment available and, and having a place where you know it, it hopefully mm -hmm. would work out. That's the idea. But hmm. it gets um, hard to... Um, 
the type of debris, the site. duration of it yeah. staying there, yep. yeah. final disposition, yep. you know, all access, what kind of access. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So. Uh, we'll be talking about that one in 10 years. Oh, yeah. My understanding is it's, it's been an ongoing. Right. Yep. And you really need multiple. Right. Anywhere that you're going to be storing potentially like hazardous materials. Sure. It's not just the trees. Right. Every all these buildings yeah. could be, you know, chemical facilities mm -hmm. impacted, so then all of a sudden that adds that extra like, what are right. we putting on this? Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Good point. So that's that's mm -hmm. what we had listed. Are there any um, major things missing that we should note? Um, I mean, you'll have a chance to review this, and yeah. we can talk about it more. Um, I think from capturing the opportunities. Uh, for improvement in the town it does a nice job also i like the fact that there's a lot of these that say effective <laughs> no I, I mean that yeah. i mean yeah. We, yeah. We, we get you know in, in uh, as a member of the board for as long as i've been a member of the board you know you kind of live your board life uh snapshot at a time and you look back 20 years and you go oh right we did that well and i think that's part that's part, good stuff yeah and i think that's why the workshop was like so smooth because at least the group I was at, you know, you clearly you know you have certain challenges, right? right. But you've but done, done a work. lot, right. and so it was like easy for everyone to kind of identify what's left to work on. Well, this is all of the unglamorous like stuff that gets done. It's yeah. Just like governance, all the stu exactly. Governance and, and not politics. Yep, and that's really what it's all about. Yep. Is it unexciting as it may be? Sometimes it's important stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah. And the day we need to do it, like when we got Blizzard, we were glad we had all those plans. Correct. Right. So we'll get back, we'll okay. look at this in a little more detail. Yeah. Uh, get back with any opportunities that we see and make sure you have that for our next meeting. Yep. And for the next meeting, I'll also incorporate um, the revision from the prior the other meetings. Yep. Um, and, and, and then move forward and um, have a draft action plan. That's the hope is to have an action plan. Um, but we do need to go back first and just kind of go through the hazard sections mm -hmm. um, and all the updates that have been included so, so that you have a chance to review those. Makes sense. So. You have to go back before you can go forward. Yeah, but you're getting close. You're mm -hmm. moving along. Um, so. It's the zen of hazard mitigation. <laughs> hey, it'll just be a new hazard next time. Well, and right? the point of bringing up the hazard mitigation grants, I mean, that's part of the purpose, is identifying actions that hopefully you can get some grant funds for, either through right. hazard mitigation yeah. or other funding sources that are out there, but having them identified in the plan is really important. I was just going to say the benefit procedural. of having the plan is be able to go, yep, identified, high priority, plunk. Yeah, exactly, and, and into your, your app grant application. Exactly. Yep. Well played. So that's what it's all about. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks for okay. this and Thank well as you. carving your Saturday morning up. Yep. It, it went great. And then it, the afternoon it, it, was lovely. It went fast. It was, <laughs> really, <laughs> it was really great. So, yeah. So, we'll move forward with following up both on the MVP work and the hazard mitigation. And um, should we, do you want to schedule a meeting now? or Sure. Or, okay. So, we're still on uh, every other Monday. Okay. Um, and what kind of duration do you think you need? Uh, a little bit of time. So next week? Um, so <laughs> yeah. So we're the 28th. No, no. The week after. Week after. Uh, so every other month. So the 11th we, is an off week. That's a holiday. And the That's right. We have a 6.30 alcohol license here. Mm -hmm. So the 25th will be the next non-regular select board. And that's the Monday before Thanksgiving. Is that... Do you think we're here? Okay. Fine. Yeah, we're here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can shoot but for the 25th. So 1125. So people who are interested have enough done by then. in participating in this, we're getting near the final stages. Is 6.30 okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because that's our regular, our regular start time. time anyway. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay, no, that, that so works better for me. So. We've already got that time, like, mentally allocated, so. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then and I'll be in touch with Cindy. I'll, I'll be in touch with you about some of the outreach for um, reaching sure. out to folks. Sure. That would be great. Awesome. Thanks, well, thanks. thanks. Alyssa appreciate and it. Zanders, appreciate it. Thank you. Take the rest of the day off. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thank any, you, Chief. Any um, select board updates?
We've already made our appointment, though, as our one other item on our list. Yep. Uh, personnel committee meeting tomorrow. We're going to hammer out a list of five. We're all looking at them privately, and then we'll come to the table and say, all right, here, you know, hammer out a list of five candidates for it. Appreciate that, David. So, yep. It was my fun. I have my around here somewhere. Scott, behind you. Right there it is. Tom, any updates for the week? From the week? Uh, we went, we, well, I, I went to the uh, Franklin County Selectman's Association meeting on uh, Thursday night, and there was a presentation. It was very well attended, but there was a presentation by the new president of GCC, uh, E. Solomon Fernandez. And it was a, it was a, a really thought-provoking meeting because um, we were talking about, she was talking in particular about Franklin County and um, today's young people, what they look for in communities, um, and talked about growing communities. And Sunderland is very well positioned for that. Um, she, she talked about um, when most when most young people are given a given a survey about where they want to live and work, they want to live. It appears they want to live in a diverse community, um, racial racially and ethnically diverse communities, and. Um, those right now are the one that demographic um, a type of community is a, one of the only places in Massachusetts that are that's growing, and Sunderland is one of those. I mean, just that's go true. to Sunderland Elementary School to yeah. see mm -hmm. to see the many different faces that 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 we have in our community, and and she she was talking about how um, um, when she, when. <clears throat> she has students visit um, about the people they bring with them and and the engagements and how GCC is trying to change um, and to not just look at locally but look at national and not just national but international uh, prominence. So it was it was a great it was a it was a really great presentation by. Uh, by uh, uh, an individual that's put a lot of time and effort and thought into what she wants to have accomplished. So it was good. We had we had a good meeting. Excellent. There's a Frontier Capital Planning Committee kickoff meeting tomorrow. We're gonna all say hello that's and great. it all begins. So <laughs> again, thank you. Well, hope this is this is a uh, one of the out comes of the advisory group was mm -hmm. to create this. So we'll see how it goes. Great. Uh, nice. Beyond that, the discussion. If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, motion. Second. Motion's made and seconded, and we're going to get out 15 minutes early. Yes. Oh, look at that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Call us out at 745. Thanks so much, FCAT.